SMT Nation, we back. In this video, we're going to be talking about some breaking news. Just came to me from internal over at at and My contacts shared with me that the DoD spectrum, the lower frequency of C-band, has been activated. 3.45 gigahertz officially on air as of right now confirmed internally in the CLE. Other markets have been confirmed as well. I know some users have been connecting to it in markets in Missouri. It looks like it's a go. All right, now there are some things obviously that are going to play into this connectivity. All right, very few handsets can actually connect to 3.45. The Samsung Galaxy S22 generation, so the regular version, the Plus, the Ultra, as well as the Flip and the Fold 4 generation, right, the most newest devices. The iPhone 14 generation can also connect to it. And then the soon to be released, I think here in the next couple of weeks, the Google Pixel 7 generation. So the 7, the 7 Pro, those are upcoming. And of course, like any of these new galaxies that come in, maybe the mid rangers and stuff like that, these moving forward, the devices are going to have this connection. Okay, so now that we've kind of got that customary stuff out of the way, what are we going to be seeing here? What is our expectation? All right, for starters, the N77 C-band channel, kind of broken down into two parts. You have the upper range, which is 3.7 gigahertz. That's the what the technicians, the engineers, they call C-band. All right, so the upper part of N77. They, AT&T currently has 40 megahertz of it live on air. We've been testing it. We've been using it. It's great. Awesome. AT&T also has 40 megahertz of the lower frequency, the DOD, 3.45 gigahertz. That's what they call it internally, the technicians, the engineers, they call it DOD. So you got 40 and 40. Next year, we're going to have an additional amount of bandwidth coming from the rest of the clearance of the upper part of C-band. So for example, my market's going to go from 40 to 80 megahertz, along with the 40 megahertz of the DOD. You have 120 megahertz of spectrum, folks. The bandwidth has some really high capacity potential. You give it proper backhaul, these sites might have 10 gig backhaul and so on. I think you have yourself a really nice connection. Remember, AT&T is not doing fixed wireless access over their mobile network. So they're not put under the same constraints that say, for example, Verizon and T-Mobile are doing with their fixed wireless access. So regardless of all of those different things, you are going to start connecting to N77 Regardless, as long as it's active in your market, if you have an iPhone 14, right, you won't be able to tell which frequency you're connected to. Maybe on a Galaxy, you could see the frequency, but the two frequencies lie in the same band. So you're not going to be able to distinguish them. I think you can with like Signal Check Pro with like Galaxies and Androids. It'll actually give you the frequency you're connected to. So it's going to be damn near impossible unless you can get access to those tools to see if you're connected to 40 megahertz of 3.45 or 40 megahertz of 3.7. Is it going to make a difference? That's kind of what we want to test. That's what we want to see. We want to see the propagation characteristics. We want to see which one works better indoors. We want to see which one travels further because it might make a difference. I can tell you guys right now, after inspecting all of these upgrades in the CLE, I'm seeing the 3.7 antennas below the 3.45 antennas and radios. This tells me I think the power levels are higher on the 3.7 and they're lower on the 3.45. And that's why they've positioned them as such. I'm I'm guessing I don't I don't have confirmation on that. I don't have, you know, the the solid information to confirm it, but that's my guess. That's my educated guess. We're going to get a chance to test the downlink throughput, the uplink throughput. We'll see how those frequencies are different. Again, you know, the frequencies are so close that it's probably negligible. What's going to be more meaningful is if they have different power levels. And it looks like maybe the upper frequency, the C-band, might have more power, thus giving it better propagation characteristics. The frequency stuff is way overrated. Something I've learned in my testing. I look at AWS, right? Band 66 has incredible reach. Oftentimes they actually have to point the antennas down because of overlap with tower sites and trying to reduce and eliminate noise in these cell sites talking to each other. 
the one thing that I think we have to understand, though, and, and obviously I haven't really alluded to it now, we have no indications as to what's going on with carry aggregation within the band. All right. So I don't know if they got a technical term for it, intraband carrier aggregation or whatever, 3.45 plus 3.7. I'm not sure about that situation right now. I don't know if that's active. I don't know if it's happening. I don't know if there's any form of restrictions that's preventing it from happening, whether it's a Nokia gear restriction, the radio gear that's going up in my market. I don't know if that's the same situation with Ericsson. I don't know if it's an X65 modem restriction, like what's actually in the iPhones, for example, and what's in the um, the Samsung Galaxy phones. Maybe it needs a firmware update. Maybe maybe they're waiting for a standalone network core. I don't know about that situation. But I can tell you guys at least this much. Confirmed internally that they will be operating both frequencies. It is active and on right now. You will have load balancing benefits. It, there will be dynamic movement between the upper and the lower parts of these this channel. All right, so if you're on the 3.7 and it's congested, there's a lot of users on it. Folks, there are going to be less users on the 3.45 frequency because of the limited user base in terms of handsets. Remember, it's it's a small percentage of devices on the network that are S22 generation, Flip Fold 4, iPhone 14, Pixel 7 isn't out yet, right? And they're just, what, less than 1% of devices on the AT&T network is a Google Pixel right? So you you would be benefiting from this, even if it's not carrier aggregating, which we have yet to be able to confirm or deny. We're waiting to see that. In fact, I'm going to be buying my iPhone this weekend. All right, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to buy one and we're going to see what happens. Who knows? Maybe we get an update and we get carrier aggregation. Maybe, maybe we don't. Maybe it comes at a later time. We're going to be testing this. But right now, the only thing I can confirm is there will be load balancing benefits to this in the case of congestion on any you know frequency like 3.7 the 3.45 should behave and propagate very similarly and people will have that additional capacity throughput available to them if they have one of the compatible devices so i'm going to go buy me an iphone i'll go get me an iphone 14 probably you guys tell me what color you want me to buy and i'll just go get it whatever uh <laughs> i'll pick whatever the most common color is in the thing. I'm going to get a case anyway, so it doesn't even matter. But uh, we will be testing this. In fact, I would like to get an Android connected as well. Uh, maybe I can get my uh, my Dish S22 unlocked, and then I can get an eSIM on there for AT&T, and we'll see if we can figure things out. But it is live. Uh, we'll be talking about it tonight on the podcast. But again, I don't want to do too much speculation. I'm going to just wait and do the testing myself. We'll be testing the frequency characteristics, the qualities the propagation, the range, the whole shebang, right? We'll see if we got carrier aggregation or not. We know what to expect, right? 40 megahertz channels, we're seeing between like 300 to 600 megabits per second from AT&T currently, um, you know, with the current backhaul, fiber backhaul situation, density, and so on. All right, so let me know what you guys think of this. Let me know if you have any insight on this. Maybe you have some internal context yourself. Maybe you've started to test it. Comment down below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notification icon to never and upload. Links in the description for my Twitter, my Gmail address for all business inquiries, and my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.